Hello fellow engineers and welcome back to City Skylines. We're back busting all of the myths that you've been providing me in the comments of the last videos. So if you've got any more, add them below. So for our first myth, we're starting here and we're going to be trying to bust the myth that you can use rocks as a cheap dam. Now, if you remember back to my last video, I made a dam out of buildings. Uh, however, these buildings, they're not cheap. The high interest tower, they cost 125 grand per building. Um, we needed a good like eight or nine of them. So knowing that they cost a million quid to build a building dam, what does an actual hydroelectric dam cost. The construction cost on that is 200,000. Uh, so whilst it does look cool, I mean, it's, it's literally a dam. That's what it's meant to do. Can we do the same thing, but for less than 200 grand? So let's delete that and then let's get into the landscaping thing. And more specifically, the rocks tab, which I don't think I've ever been in. There's, <laughs> there's so many rocks. Anyway, there's loads and loads of different types. I assume I probably want to go with like the tallest ones. Yeah, there are those. They could work. Oh, look, they get little trees around them as well. Oh, God. <laughs> We've, like, merged up the cliff face. Why is there a gap? There? Look at that gap. Anyway, let's let's try and just shove these. I think we can sort of build them inside each other. Now, these cost 100 quid each, which is actually... That's a lot of rock for your money, considering you get trees as well. And I've just spawned 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10... 22 of them, which means I've spent 2,200 quid. So this is a hell of a lot cheaper than the 200 grand. Uh, it's 100 times cheaper, so you could have 100 dams if you wanted to. Um, but before I call it a dam, I should probably press play and watch this water hit the back of it and see if it does actually work as a dam. I'm not going to lie, I'm a bit concerned about that gap there, but we'll, we'll have to see how it gets on. So water is hitting the back of it. The trees the trees are actually doing okay. I thought they wouldn't like this situation, although they're they're going under what okay, the trees the trees have drowned. Meanwhile, out the front, it's completely watertight. What? So you can actually use rocks as cheap damn. That's really cool. Fair play. I wonder then if I because obviously there's there's a water spawn there. It's trying to keep the water at a certain level. If that water level is like too high, uh, this dam is gonna flood. And I don't think you can make the rocks higher. And with the actual dam, obviously that lets a bit of water out the front. So let's just see if we were to like delete a couple of them so there's a gap. Will that let some water through? Oh, what the? Yes. Yeah, there it goes. There it goes. Okay, so that's cool. So basically, yeah, that's exactly the same as a normal dam. It's letting a little bit of water out. So you can use rocks as cheap dams. That is myth confirmed. So for this next myth, I've loaded up the, the water bridge map, uh, mainly just because I think it's cool and I want to show it off again. Um... <laughs> <laughs> Nothing to do with the actual myth. The actual myth is dried sewage makes forest fires worse. <laughs> Oh, I can't believe I'm testing this one. So basically, the idea is the sewage acts as fertilizer. And yeah, the reason I've actually picked this map is because we've got some buildings and stuff. So we should be able to do some like sewage because I can just get rid of this. This is my like sewage plant. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to flatten an area like that. By the way, people that told me the terrain isn't broken. <laughs> Look at that. It looks like a blooming dinosaur's back. But yeah, basically I was told I was using like that one, the, the blob, which has like sharp edges. Oh, it's fair enough, but they stress I use like a soft one. So let's, for example, let's go with the softest brush there is and we'll do another line like up here and we'll see, does it do the same thing? Yes. Yes, it does. Oh, look, I've brought the tree to the surface. And that's while looking straight down vertically as well. Uh, and even with the brush strength at 0.5, if I put it up to 1, it still does the same thing. You can't just do a smooth mound anymore. It's like so lumpy. There's only modders that actually knows like what's going on. Is it the mod? Is it me? Is I don't know. Like, look at it. That's... <laughs> <laughs> what, what is, is that? that? Right, well, I've made that. I'm then going to go and delete. Oh, wait, no, you're an incineration plant. Where's the water treatment? Oh, you're over here. You're over here. Oh, yeah, that's dumping poo into the river. We don't we don't want that. We don't want that. So we're getting rid of you, boosh. And we're going to want to dump some sewage down one side of this. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to plant trees all over the place first. So there you go. That's all painted in with trees. Lovely jubbly. Now, I'm then going to delete them from the middle because I don't want the fire to spread from one side to the other. So we basically do a bit of of that press delete all right so that's good we got two pretty much identical strips the the thing you'll notice here i do actually have trees in the middle yeah that's because i wanted this high enough so that sewage didn't leak from one side to the other uh, but if i start the fire in the middle it should spread both ways equally so first off let's sewage up one of these sides that involves just giving them some power as well there we go we have poo uh, i've just realized like how big these freaking outlets are. like look at the size of that pipe compared to the trees 
beneath. What? Anyway, we've got a good load of sewage coming out. I'm just going to speed it up and let that proper cause some carnage. So this side's going to be nice and pooey. I think it's time we can probably turn these off now. So let's delete all of these because, of course, the myth was dried sewage. It's not raw sewage. I'm just going to soften this terrain up here as well just so the fire will spread if I put it in the middle. Natural disasters, let's select the forest fire and we're going to shove it right in the middle up the top here. Boosh. And then we're going to press play and we're going to watch it burn. So the top is sewage, the bottom is no sewage. Is the top going to burn faster than the bottom? It's not looking likely at the moment. We're actually... Actually, the top one is sort of drifting ahead a bit. Maybe there is some logic to this after all. I wasn't expecting that. I'm just thinking like maybe the more sewage, like there's going to be way more sewage down the bottom. So maybe that is making it jump. Although check out the bottom one. That's jumped a little bit as well. All right, let's just time lapse that till the end and we'll see how it's looking. Well, you can see in the end, the top one actually went out before the bottom one. Um, I feel like the bottom one's about to burn itself out anyway, but I'm pretty sure we can say that that myth is busted. Dried sewage does not make forest fires worse. So if you're spilling sewage everywhere, you don't need to worry about those forest fires getting out of hand. Anyway, on to the next myth. Oh, hang on a sec. What happened here? What happened here? But my, my water bridge is flooded, but cars are still using it. What? Well, if there was a myth that said cars won't drive through flooded tunnels, I think we've just busted that one because uh, it turns out they will. <laughs> How random. Anyway, for this one, we're moving away from the water bridge over to this. Now, this is a mountain. Uh, and if you're an avid city builder like myself, you might actually, rather than describing it as a mountain, you might just describe it as this is in the way. Now, thankfully, I have unlimited money. But if I didn't, you'd know that terraforming the ground is very, very expensive. Uh, so I have a myth here that says natural disasters can be used to terraform for free. So we all know that I could use the terraform to get rid of that mountain. But what if we were to use perhaps a sinkhole on top? Let's see what a sinkhole on top of a mountain actually does. All right, so there it goes. There is the sink. I don't actually know how these work. Like, is it just relative to the ground, how much of a hole they make? I'm not going to lie, that's quite a small crater really, isn't it? Compared to the mountain. Now, there's two things we can do here. Someone actually told me, yeah, look, we can slide this severity meter, which I never knew I could do before. If I shove another sinkhole, well, let's put it next to it so we can do a direct comparison. So that was a severity rating of 5.5. This new one has a severity rating of 10. So I assume it's twice as deep or maybe it's twice as round. Oh, twice as round. Is it twice as deep as well oh yes oh that's quite a hole that is although when you zoom out it's not it's not really is it i mean perhaps we could try flinging meteors at it so let's just fling one into the middle just to work out what angle it's gonna come from right there it is it's coming in at that angle ready Boosh! oh i destroyed the trees <laughs> There you go, it's a cheap way of getting rid of trees as well. Um, now, I assume that actually made a dent in... Oh my goodness, the mountain is on fire. Uh, but yeah, remember, these are free. Like, it doesn't cost us to fling meteors at our city. So if we were to, for example, just go a little bit crazy and... Uh, yeah, right, here they come. Here they come. <laughs> It's going to be pretty constant. Oh, they're coming in from all different angles, it looks like. But yeah, after about 10 minutes of doing this, I'm interested to see how much of a dent this would have made in the mountain. All right, so there we go. How's that? Oh, man, we have eaten a chunk of that mountain out. Uh, there is there is a fire spreading, which... Oh, we've destroyed the road as well. Sorry, guys. <laughs> Sorry. But yeah, mountain pretty much gone. I mean, if I had the patience, I could definitely just keep flinging asteroids. And uh, that's completely free, remember? That cost us nothing to remove an entire mountain and some roads and trees and stuff. So yeah, overall, I'd say that is myth confirmed. Anyway, for this next one, we are back in the magnificent Engertopia. Ah, oh, Engertopia, I've missed you. I forgot about the Pokeball. Now, I mean, by the way, do you remember? Do you remember Atlantis is under underground? Well, not underground. It's it's, it's underwater. It's meant to be just underground, but it's underwater. That's the sea level. We plopped all these pumps down here, and we just kept getting flooding. You know, I assumed it was like coming out the dam hole, but um, what some of you clever guys in the comments said was, Matt, have you checked to see where the water source is for this lake? Um, and I'll say, no, no, I haven't. Oh, no way. No way. Look, it's there. <laughs> All right, so I've moved the water source from there over to here, which means hopefully Eng Atlantis should stop 
flooding and we can we can rebuild again finally now, but anyway let's get back into these myths so what i need to do i need to find like a small little area where i'm gonna build a new town i mean i could perhaps just do it down down this road let's change the name to tiny weenie street so basically the myth is a one grid demand building can be used to build an entire city so what do i mean by that so if we come down to here this is our zoning tool uh, and when we zoom out you can sort of see like the buildings are sort of made up of like four by four squares most of the time now obviously when roads get a bit more complicated you get sort of like little weird little shapes and things yeah, but essentially this myth is saying rather than doing like a full square like that we literally just paint like one grid like that so if we do a low density house a high density house some shops some high density shops some industrial and an office basically that's what we're building a city with uh, now in order for this to work i don't think we can do adjacently because then that will build like two buildings maybe here we can do adjacent colors because they're not technically touching but if i were to do like that for example uh, that's not what the myth was about because that's going to be like a single building and we'll just build this we'll see what happens it's working it's working i wasn't expecting this oh Oh, so we could build like a little micro city. Oh, look, they need water. They need water. Oh, look, is that a petrol station? Dino oil. Well, how do you, how do you pay for it? Where's, where's the building part of that? <laughs> oh, man, can you imagine if you had that house? Like, you had all that space. You had nice views out the side. <laughs> and now he's got like two, like, tower blocks either side of him. Like, looking out of his window. He's got a window there. It's like the smallest alley just straight into someone's brick wall. Oh, look, this is casting a shadow on him. Like, well, I mean, to be fair, the, the Pukeno is casting a shadow over everyone. Yeah, but look, they're all going up. Myrtle bio, medium mug. And we've got every. Oh, what is that? We've got, we got a testicle. And. Oh, man, if only... Right, okay, sorry whoever owns this. I've got to get rid of that. i got to swap it for one of these. we got to do some strong city layouts. Come on. Yes, there we go. <laughs> Oh, man. So not only can you build a micro city, but you can build stupidly efficient micro cities. It's so efficient. And yeah, I think Tiny Weenie Street is a great addition to Engertopia. So that myth is well and truly confirmed. Wow. Anyway, now I'm going to hit save on Engertopia because we have a more destructive myth to test. Uh, so essentially, the myth is... <laughs> skyscrapers shield smaller buildings from meteors yeah so what i'm thinking if i get a load of small buildings in the middle let's grab a road from here and then we'll do that sort of thing then i just want to paint all of these up with like small buildings maybe some around this edge as well so they're all small buildings now there's the thing with this is can we save this from a meteor strike by using skyscrapers now i'm gonna go into the unique building i'm gonna use the one that i spotted earlier now the trouble with this is can you see it's a bit finicky Key. It's like saying the building must be placed on roadside, but there's like buildings in the way that will get demolished and stuff. So you sort of know the drill. I'm gonna I'm gonna take this lovely little adorable bluebird and I'm gonna turn it from that into a heavy metal and a keybird, which means I can now place these wherever I want. So what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna literally try and surround all these small little buildings with these huge skyscrapers and we'll see will it protect them and yeah the bottom is narrower than the top which is just like there's there's just no need to do that that's just architecture and its finest um, but we've got those i'm thinking should i do like another another layer of tall building are there taller buildings than that oh yes what about the ps5s i think they will do actually so i'm gonna build these like sort of like that <laughs> Oh dear, right. Let's just head inside. <laughs> this is now their view. It's like <laughs> it's pitch black all the time. If we now grab a meteor, um, and I might I might lower this down to just a one severity, but if I go like slap bang in the middle, so if we just stay looking at this and we wait for a meteor to hit, I imagine it should hit the buildings first, and then we'll see whether these guys in the middle will be protected or not. Oh, what the hell? There's a tornado. Why is there a tornado? Oh, I may have selected the wrong one. <laughs> Did I really? How am I that idiotic? Oh, no. Well, there comes down some buildings. Uh, the inside of this is completely ruined by that tornado. <laughs> 
So, does skyscrapers protect small buildings from tornadoes? That's busted. Right, so everyone's rebuilt. So these are the buildings we're trying to protect. I feel like, actually, I put, like, an ancient oriental building in the middle. So that's, like, a sacred temple. And we're going to see, can we can we protect it with all these buildings? I mean, you, you'd think so. Looking up, there's no way a meteor can get in here. Surely. I've also guaranteed I actually, I did hit the meteor button this time. So we are looking in the sky for a meteor. We're not... <laughs> there shouldn't be any tornadoes dotted around. All right, there it comes. Here it comes. So looking from the side. Boosh. Oh, it hit the building dead on. Um, Let's have a look down. Oh, dear. <laughs> so it took the two buildings down. Oh, oh, that's, um, yeah, that, that, it's destroyed everything. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, if you ever look out the window and you see a meteor coming and you happen to be in a small building by a skyscraper, don't just sit there and think you're going to be okay. I'd actually try and run away. Life advice from RCE. Sorry, sacred temple that I destroyed. So yeah, sadly, that is myth busted. And oi, oi, look out, look out. We've got, we got the fire brigade and they're dropping water on these buildings to put the fires out. And that brings us swiftly on to our next myth. For this next myth, we're back on our favorite map, the tsunami map. First off, we need to we need to do some tweaks to the water sources. So water source there, deleted. There, deleted. Now yeah, just check there's none in the sea. Okay, there's none in the sea. That's good. Yeah, I then want to get rid of the water. So I'm just going to fill that in. I'm going to fill this in down here. Fill in this entire river delete all these roads and train lines right and then we're good to do a test now this myth is gonna be a pretty a pretty huge one a momental one in terms of my time for you guys it's probably gonna be fine to watch but the myth is you can stop a tsunami with fire helicopters now as we learned before fire helicopters they do actually take water out of the water source before they drop it on a forest fire so what we're gonna be doing we're gonna do a small little test just to sort of work out how many helicopters we can get per like square meter of fire and then we're going to be filling this entire area with forest fires and firefighter helicopters and hopefully we'll have enough of them that they sort of take all the water out the sea i don't know that is the theory anyway so first off as we learned previously in order to get the fire helicopters to work you actually you need roads so we put the roads in then we get the fire helicopters and shove them down so now we've got a load of helicopter stations blotted down you gotta make sure they've got water and electricity so we'll do a load of this that's a load of water towers we can plop more down if we need them we need some electricity as well what are you doing dog what are you doing so i've been rudely interrupted by paddy hello boy <laughs> what are you doing dog what have you got for me have you got a duck he's got a duck he's got a duck good boy everyone go check out paddy's youtube channel he's a youtuber all right he's coming onto my lap so let's get back into the game oh, paddy you're getting a bit big for this boy paddy. <laughs> all right let's just shove some nuclear plants down all right so now we have a load of nuclear plants and water and oh they are they are being flooded a bit i forgot where i <laughs> where i raised the ground on the level the water has now reappeared uh, hopefully that'll be gone soon with Without any nuclear explosions. I don't think power plants are meant to be fully submerged. Uh, we'll have to keep an eye on that. Anyway, for now, we've got all of these up and running. Which means we can test how many trees can a row of those put out. Uh, in order to get all three helicopters in use. Because you can see each one of these buildings, they have three helicopters. And obviously, we want to max that out. So, let's do a strip of trees like that, I guess. In order to send them up when there's a fire, we do need to add one more thing. And that is these watchtowers. Because you can see that's all red at the moment. But once we put in a few watchtowers, yeah, they're now all blue, which means they're all in range. Um, unfortunately, in range is also the tsunami. It's ever approaching. So we, we do need to do this fairly quickly. So we're literally just going to click all the way along here. You can see fires are spreading. We just need to make sure we actually have enough helicopters going out. So you can see helicopters are taking off. I don't actually know if we're... I don't think we're using that many helicopters, actually. That one's using zero. That's using zero as well. That's using two. All right, so now it looks like there's a lot more helicopters than you <laughs> look down there. Oh, this is what we wanted. Helicopters everywhere. There are so many fire helicopters in use. Okay, this is good. This is good. So most of these appear to be like three out of three now. So that's probably the right amount. I think we just need to make sure... We do like enough actual fires. So let's reload and let's do this properly. And as I reload this, there is still dog on lap, by the way. <laughs> 
Oh, he's so silly, that dog. So what we're going to do, we're going to select all of those. We're then going to hit copy. We're going to copy them up to there. And then there. And then there. And there. All right, so now we've ended up with this. Loads and loads of trees. Loads and loads of fire helicopters. And the tsunami still approaching. So let's get the fires started. Oh no, the camera's zooming in. Still, we're on to the second row. Keep them going, Matt. Keep them going. I'm seeing helicopters everywhere. I mean, this could potentially crash the game. There's going to be a lot going on here. There's like trees burning. There's helicopters flying. There's a tsunami on its way, you remember. So the question is, is there going to be enough helicopters <laughs> To get rid of the sea before the tsunami comes. I don't think it's going to happen. And there's quite a lot of helicopters about, actually. Yeah, annoyingly, though, they appear to be taking the water from all this river flooding. Now, obviously, I couldn't really get rid of that water because by the time that drained, the tsunami would be hitting. I mean, I really wish the blooming camera didn't keep jumping to each fire that I set, but... <laughs> You can see just how many helicopters there are dotted around. There's so many. Um, however, as we head along this way through the hordes and hordes of helicopter, uh, you'll see the tsunami is pretty much here. We didn't really make a dent in the sea, did we? Uh, so if we just speed this up, we'll probably see... <laughs> that this myth is likely to be busted. I will say though, they tried. They definitely tried. Like, look at the sky over there. It's, <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> so yeah, whilst impressive looking, I think we do have to say that that was a myth absolutely busted. Fire helicopters cannot defeat the tsunami. No chance. Um, but I hope you all, I hope you all learned something today, guys. And remember, if you have any more myths that you want to see in future videos, let me know in the comments and I will get through to them. But for now, I'll have to say peace, love, and another tsunami myth busted. Bye, guys! Man, what a mess. Who's going to clear all this up?